Hello again, I'm Matteo and this is the third installment of the Free Software Alternatives where we take a look at commonly used software and services uh, and try to find a replacement for uh, with a uh, focus on privacy and self-hosted in the free software spectrum. So this time I would like to talk about the Google Documents suite uh, where we have uh, text documents, we have presentations, uh, spreadsheets, etc. So um, what is what is nice about those products is like the capabilities that you have in just create a document with a simple click in your browser and being able to just share it with a coworker or even start working collaboratively and uh, typing and and seeing the real time updates uh, for the edits that the other person is doing. So um, that. Uh, feature set is quite impressive but we'll see that there is a free alternative that is self-hosted and there is not privacy invasive uh, that you can own and uh, you can have in your own servers and you can have it uh, working seamlessly with other uh, free products that I uh, will talk about later on in this series but I want to uh, go ahead and uh, do a quick introduction so um, in this case I'm gonna show uh, my instance of Nextcloud, uh, which is kind of an alternative to Dropbox and uh, Google Drive. And uh, it is a good way to find uh, documents. And this is what uh, this is about, documents, text documents, presentations, etc. So um, as, I, as I said, we'll look at uh, Nextcloud later, but uh, just know that this is mirroring some uh, folder in my hard drive and it syncs across all my devices uh, but I want to take a look at the documents folder and uh, what I did when I quit the um, uh, Google services is I exported everything that I had there in the ODT format so uh, I see here under text documents that I have one old document from four years ago that I can open and you'll see that the end goal is to, to have an, an interface that you can see that it respects all the formatting that I had back in the day and this is some uh, document that I had um, shared while I was mentoring for the Google Summer of Code and uh, this was not written by me but it kind of has almost everything like it has links it has uh, as you can see it has some formatting, uh, it has images embedded, and uh, also uh, I had a comment in the uh, in the Google document that it was imported here. And this is all running as an ODT document, which I could open in my uh, in my machine as a with using uh, LibreOffice and uh, just make some edits and it would be exported here. And then again, I can use this next cloud that we'll talk about later at some point to share it with a, a coworker so they can uh, just uh, get working. So I will not be demonstrating the um, real time collaboration capabilities, but you can trust me, it works as you would expect, like you would see like the other carrot of the person that you're collaborating with here, and it will just uh, be typing on it. So as you can see, it features all of the uh, settings that you would expect from like uh, an editor. In this case, uh, this is the, the Google Doc or uh, the Word alternative but you would have the same for presentations, etc. So um, how did we achieve this? Uh, this is using Collabora, uh, the Collabora Online, the developer edition, uh, which is the open source uh, version that um, Collabora is offering. And you, if you go to this uh, documentation here, uh, you'll see that uh, it gets you. It gives you more more information. So the architecture that I did is uh, a little bit elaborate, but um, I'm self-hosting Nextcloud uh, somewhere here in my office. But I have this the server that deals with uh, this office suite somewhere else in a VPS that um, that I'm renting, and uh, it 
Dis Next Cloud installation just calls and embeds this uh, in here. So that may sound a little bit complex, but uh, what it just means is that uh, you have an API that this server, again, here in my office, is heating to a VPS somewhere else. So uh, let's dive in a little bit. Um, and uh, in order to uh, follow along and install this in your in your server, just uh, go to the documentation. And it's, it's pretty simple if you follow the steps. What I did is I installed the Linux packages for uh, I'm running Ubuntu. And I did this, then I did that, and then I edited the configuration file. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty pretty standard. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the configuration because it has like uh, it took me a little bit of tweaking to uh, know how to uh, configure this to talk to uh, this server that I have here in cloud dot .com, uh, talking to this office dot uh, .com, which is uh, where my VPS is. So let me switch to the terminal and I'm gonna SSH to the box. It should probably wouldn't be exposing the port there, but uh, I can change it later. Um, anyways, um, so I'm gonna be in here a uh, little bit, so uh, I'm gonna do sudo. Uh, all right. So. Mm, I think I did it right. All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm editing this file, and uh, as you can see, uh, this has like a ton of configuration. Uh, this is a, an XML file that controls how your office server is going to send the rendered HTML uh, to the um, to the next cloud install. So you can have like a, a wrapper around it and you can share it with uh, your coworkers, etc. Um, so um, the settings are pretty well described here in the uh, description attribute uh, but uh, what I did is I changed the server name to point to this subdomain I then uh, went down here and enabled logging went to the network settings and made sure oops not here sorry down here a little bit. Um, under the SSL attribute, I made uh, sure that the enable was false because I don't want SSL in the service itself. Ha however, I'm gonna use nginx to do SSL termination, so I'm terminating SSL and I'm setting it to false here. So. That's uh, what I did. This is going to be uh, ignored because I'm going to gonna set that up in Nginx. So uh, don't pay too much attention to that. And then finally here I whitelisted uh, with scaping, which is important, the, oops, not this one, uh, the different, the different domains that I will be using the service from. So in my case, this is the, relevant one and that's uh, what I'm going to be using. So uh, I don't think that there is anything more important. Uh, down here you have like the web admin console settings but there is not much that you can do in the web admin console settings. Um, so I'm gonna uh, not going to be focusing on that too much. So let me do to see engine X sites enabled and this is office. Mm -hmm. All right, so in here um, you see that I have a like an elaborate uh, well or or not, uh, but this is a 
uh, s the settings that I copied from the documentation uh, and I'll show you in a minute where that is and I only had to change uh, the SSL settings to use my Let's Encrypt uh, the, com sir, uh, the Let's Encrypt uh, drop in here uh, the, um, the SSL information uh, for the certificate etc so um, this is not uh, very complex uh, provided that you'll see that here you have the nginx reverse proxy information and instead of uh, this one I terminated SSL at the proxy. So basically pasted that and uh, put the, uh, the um, let's encrypt uh, configuration in there. And that's pretty much what it took for me to do this and then I went to my apps and enabled um, the integration for Collabora and uh, pasted in the this domain in there and it works. Uh, I had to do some um, authentication uh, and uh, which you will set up in here. Uh, like if I scrolled down a little bit, uh, I would have been showing my password and you set your password there and then you paste it in the um, in the app settings and that's pretty much it uh, and then you get this kick ass if you ask me integration uh, which is kind of uh, an awesome replacement for your uh, Google documents and it allows you to self host them I'm having I have my personal NAS over there and I can just have my, my presentations in the ODP format um, no, this one might be a little bit less heavy on images, so it might load uh, faster. And yeah, there you go. Uh, you can do uh, collaboration here. You can, uh, you know, do uh, comments. I forget where comments. Where do you set comments? Maybe uh, like this. Well, anyways, um, this this is pretty pretty standard uh, and. It works as you would expect so that's it I hope you like it and if you want more details on how uh, to set this up I would really just uh, refer you to the documentation here but if you want to uh, do like more comments or ask more um, particular questions uh, don't hesitate to leave comments in the blog or in uh, the where the video is hosted so that's it. Ta-da.